Ahead tonight, progress being made at those high-level Bahama talks in China. It's application overload at the passport office as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs implements some new measures to try to speed up the process. We'll bring you all those details, so stay tuned. BTC management setting the record straight on contract negotiations and redundancies. We'll have all the details coming up in the Bahamas tonight. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Those much anticipated talks with the principals involved in the Bahamar issue have begun in Beijing, China. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. The Bahamian people are represented around the table by a slew of experts from the office of the Prime Minister and the Attorney General's office. And while they're taking a position as the middleman, Government is hoping to steer these talks to a place of resolution that would get the mega three and a half billion dollar resort finished and opened in the shortest possible time. Clint Watson has been following this developing story. Government officials led by the Attorney General, Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson, are preparing to head into their second day of negotiations at this hour in Beijing, China, as they seek to mediate a resolution to the completion of the stalled Bahama development. Sources close to the negotiating table telling ZNS News that there are several issues that may require government's approval and intervention. Now we can tell you that Cabinet is meeting at this hour in a special sitting, most likely in order to get government's approval and consensus on developments from day one and to prepare for the second and final day of meeting meetings in China between the Chinese lenders, contractors, and Bahamar. Representing the government in China is Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senator the Honorable Allison Maynard Gibson, Senior Policy Advisor to the Prime Minister, Sir Baltram Bethel, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Cresswell Stirrup, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sheila Carey, and six others from the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Works, and the Office of the Prime Minister. Meantime, Bahama is sharing its views on the meetings. In a statement, the company says it is hoping that the nature of those discussions taking place in China is not revealed, at least for the time being. Bahama says since the discussions are between private parties, meaning Bahama, China State Construction, and China XM Bank, with the Bahamian government volunteering to be the neutral mediator in this process, no one should seek to comment on the nature of discussions. Bahama says the sensitivity of the talks are critical to being able to try to work toward a consensual resolution. Bahama says it plans on not making any public statements on the discussions as they occur and says they would hope those attending conduct themselves in a similar fashion so that the private parties have the most conducive environment in which to undertake this effort. The statement by Bahama says, quote, like the government, they recognize the importance of completing construction and successfully opening Bahama as soon as possible, end quote. And while they appreciate the government's efforts to try to help all parties work together to achieve a consensual resolution in a timely manner, it is clear that the company feels at this critical juncture, silence may be golden. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Also tonight, Chief Executive Officer of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company, Leon Williams, is setting the record straight when it comes to contract negotiations and proposed redundancies at that corporation. Yes, yesterday officials from the Bahamas Communications and Public Officers Union accused BTC of bullying staff over proposed job cuts. Jimmy Nusweet attended BTC's press conference late this afternoon and has the latest on the company's future. Good evening, Jimmy. Good evening, Charisma. Good evening, Bahamas. Bahamas Telecommunications Company CEO Leon Williams says he was shocked by the statements in the media that the company was bullying staff over contract negotiations and proposed redundancies. On Sunday, Secretary General of the Bahamas Communications and Public Offices Union, Dina Rill, made those claims. Here's Mr. Williams's response. How are we going to bully staff? You don't think if we, were, if we were doing that, that those correspondences would be in the press? This afternoon, I've offered the union a revised uh, contract offering, final offering, sent a notice out to the staff to let them know that there were certain elements that the <coughs> company had put on the table that we have now revised and taken them off the table. 
William says of the 800 employees, no decision has been made about how many will be made redundant, despite the union claiming 140 will be let go. Williams adds that the decision will be made based on cost-cutting goals, and no decision has yet been made. Well, most of those departments that will be made redundant, they will be outsourced. It doesn't mean that the work is not being done, but the work will be just done on contract. The same model of 1999 will be invoked in 2015. He added that back in March, the company extended what he termed a lucrative voluntary separation package for employees, which the union rejected. Since no one has accepted it, the company will have to proceed with redundancies. There's an established agreement in the industrial agreement. We'll follow the industrial agreement. Whatever, whatever the industrial agreement says, the company should pay. We'll take out the incentive and pay that. For the last several months, management and union officials have been negotiating a new industrial agreement, something Williams says was 73% complete, with sticking points on working Saturdays and other benefits. Williams made clear the current position of negotiations. A side office or additional office or office to placate the union or office in some cases to incentivize the union. We are now taking those off the table. Williams made it clear that he will not disclose the numbers of persons that will be leaving the company until he has had an opportunity to meet with the union and impacted employees. Reporting live in the newsroom, Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. The summer months are usually the peak period for the passport office, but this year the situation is compounded with the rush to November deadline for e-passports and the numerous challenges the passport office continues to face. Minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs recently announced that a $200 fee will be attached to people needing a passport right away. Our Janine Noel Ferguson tells us that there were mixed views today at the passport office's Thompson Boulevard headquarters. If you're applying for a passport and need it in 48 hours, there will be a $200 charge. The wait time has also increased from 8 to 12 weeks. The changes, in particular the fee increase, garnering mixed reaction. Come on, they just put that on us. What's going on with that? $200, man, come on. And then $50 plus $200. Passport is necessary to travel, and it's a government document, so... Whatever fee cost, just pay it. I just tell I rather just put it in, pay the fifty dollars, and put it in and wait the two months. The new changes, however, won't impact those who were given a pickup date before July first. A statement from the Minister of Foreign Affairs says those people, along with anyone with a medical emergency, won't have to pay the additional cost. Sean Roll found himself in a difficult situation on Monday morning. He was already at the airport with his family when he discovered that his daughter's passport was outdated. They came, yeah. Now they told me yeah, if I wanted extended as 200 I don't feel it's fair that I should have to pay that $200. I mean, and what next? Another applicant, Christopher Nixon, said he applied for his daughter's passport months ago. You don't but now like four months now. That's right. My big, my already I already, I already made vacation plan. And this is what I got to go through right now. Being in there now, the, the drop of my, my stuff, nobody could receive it. Why? What is this we got going on here in the Bahamas, man? It's nonsense. Nobody will take your documents. You got to be up and down burning gas, driving from this way, driving that way. They don't know how far you live in and you got to come back. On Monday, we visited the passport office. There were long lines inside. Their stories were similar. Well, it took a long time. And because I live abroad, it was a little bit more complicated having to come here. But since... I'm here and I got it done and I'm hoping to have it back this afternoon. I applied, applied, applied the, 5th, the 11th of May. The 11th of May? Uh -huh. And what they told you? Come back on the 11th of uh, July. And today? Today? What did they tell Today you? they told me come back next, come back on Friday. Too many people, too many people to be serving. They, they don't look like they can even get saved. But not everyone had the same view. Some found the process quite smooth. I mean, everything is in order. Everything's in order. Now, we did attempt to speak with officials here at the passport office, but we're told that none were available. The latest statement from the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fred Mitchell, indicated that staff and new equipment were being brought in to reduce the backlog of some 6,500 applications. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. 
This segment of the news is brought to you by Platinum Bride Couture, downtown Nassau on Parliament Street. Begin your happily ever after at Platinum Bride Couture. Thank you.